Well, the average sale price in the Portland metro area did rebound after two weeks of pretty low numbers. Uh, I'm Ron Milligan with Remax Select here in Portland's Pearl District. And of course, I've got the weekly uh, market statistics for the full pet Portland metro area, both um, Southwest Washington and the entirety of Portland uh, with all the bedroom communities. Um, so first thing up is the uh, supply of active listings. Um, and that number is staying relatively stable. If you check out the graph here, you can see that for the last two months, we kind of, you know, we had been, um, the number of active listings have been increasing, increasing, increasing. And then finally, a couple of months ago that we hit a high point and things have sort of leveled off. Some weeks we gain a couple of listings, some weeks we lose a couple of listings, but we're staying in a pretty steady range right now. Um, you can see here we gained 30 listings. Previous week it was like a, a loss of 50, 60 listings. Um, so that one's staying relatively stable and how stable that is going to stay especially going through the end of the year, depends on buyer demand. Um, so buyer demand uh, was is down definitely. So where um, the number of new pending deals, 551 um, during the same time last year, that number was 1,009. Um, so much more activity last year, not a huge surprise. Interest rates were, you know, in the low threes, high twos. And, and right now we have interest rates um, in the mid sixes. Uh, and last week it was even higher. I mean, a couple weeks ago, we kind of peaked at near 7%. Um, rates dropped down a little bit last week and this week they're starting to edge back up again. But that definitely has a big effect on the number of transactions this year versus last year, obviously. Um, I did check out the number of lockbox opens just to see how many buyers were still out there. And it's still a respectable number of lockbox opens. Um, so the previous, um, uh, pretty, pretty much the same time period last year, the same week last year, the number of lockbox opens was 21,055 for, uh, for the Portland metro area. Uh, and um, this year that number came in at 18,337. That's a decrease of 14.6%. So folks are still out there looking at listings. They're just not writing as many offers um, this year as they uh, had been uh, last year. Um, you know, number of showings is down 15% versus the number of contracts. It's almost 50% lower this year versus last year. The number of new active listings is uh, up slightly versus the previous week, 662 versus 619. Uh, last year in my notes, that number was 668. So we're kind of on par with where we were last year at this time. However, a lot of those um, new listings are um, those fake new listings or old listings repackaged as new and resubmitted to the MLS as if they're brand new listings, resetting the days on market and giving them a new ML number and causing them to pop in this, in this category. Um, so I do feel like we have fewer new listings, but one of the things I think is a bit of a problem is, you know, we may have some contracts coming in um, and properties going under contract, but I'm starting to see a lot of sale fails. So, you know, one, two weeks into the process, the buyers and the sellers can't agree on something, typically on repairs, or maybe the buyers just get cold feet and they walk, use under the guise of one of the contingencies, take their earnest money and walk away. Um, so that is one of the things that, you know, it's kind of two steps forward, one step back with the inventory that we're dealing with. The number of price reductions uh, was pretty much the same, uh, 834 versus last week, 832, so an increase of two. Um, of those that were uh, more significant price reductions, price reductions of $15,000 or more, uh, that number came in at 498. Um, I believe last week that number was in the low 400s. So it looks like sellers are getting a little more aggressive with their uh, price reductions, wanting to get their properties uh, under contract and off the market. Uh, big increases in the uh, average days on market and the median days on market. Um, so the average days on market went from 31 to 36 days versus last year's 20. Uh, and the median increased from 16 to 21 days versus last year's seven. Um, so big increases there. Uh, what I teased with at the beginning was a rebound in the average sale price. Uh, that increased significantly. Um, the average sale price ended last week at over 600,000, 605,935 versus the same, roughly the same time period last year, 
562, 571. That's an increase in the average sale price of around 7.7%. Previous week, that number was 4.5%. So those numbers were much closer together. Uh, median stayed relatively the same, uh, 545 versus 504 last year. That's an 8.1% increase in the median sale price this year versus roughly the same time period last year. Um, and last week, that number was eight. So we went up one tenth of a percent uh, versus last week. Um, the number of um, bank owned and short sale properties, um, including active, pending, and short sale pending, uh, did increase slightly. We're up to 44, uh, but keep in mind that we're comparing that to the total number of pending and active deals, um, which is um, closing in on, on 9,000 listings. So 44 um, a distressed sales versus um, the entirety of the active and pending uh, number of listings in the metro area is about 9,000. So where does this leave us at the end of the week? Um, it leaves us or leaves me with a couple of thoughts. One is, you know, we've got our um, our supply of active listings pretty stable. Um, last year at this time, though, buyer activity continued relatively strongly. We didn't get a lot of new listings, and it really drove our inventory of active listings down. Um, you know, right now we're at um, 54.89. Last year at this time, we're at 35.83. That's a 53% um, increase in the number of active listings this year versus last year. And last year at this time, as I was saying, buyer activity remained strong at a time when we weren't getting a lot of new listings and that drove our inventory down week after week after week until we started out our buying season last year at less than, at fewer than 2,000 active listings. So last year at this time, 3,500, 3,600. By the time our, our buying season started at the beginning of this year, the, the inventory was, was really low, less than, just shy of 2,000 active listings. So if our buyer demand doesn't, because I, I don't see a lot of new listings hitting the market, but if our buyer demand continues to wane and we don't start getting the number of active listings down before the start of our next buying season, but before our next before next spring, then we're probably going to have a larger number to begin with. And when those folks that are thinking about selling next spring start to hit the market, we may have a flood and an increase, a, a big increase in the number of active listings, especially if the Fed holds true with their plan uh, to continue raising interest rates until rates get above um, the rate of inflation. You know, the intent is to get inflation under control and then start pulling back on interest rates. So if that's the case, it could be a convergence of a couple of things that may um, spell a bit of stagnation plus with our market. We'll just have to wait and see and see what happens with buyer demand uh, as we go through um, this winter. Um, again, I am seeing folks having conversations with folks that are seeing for the first time opportunities for them to buy. So there are segments of the market that have been um, that are still being driven forward uh, by um, buyers who have not been able to purchase over the last three or four years and now can make those purchases. Uh, folks that are using first time home buyer pro uh, products, um, down payment assistance products, um, and folks that are doing low down payment um, purchases. Um, so we'll see what happens. And of course, I will bring you the updates week after week. Um, if you have any questions about what's going on in your neck of the woods, I'm always happy to help and share what I know. Uh, and if you have any questions in general, throw them down in the comments. I read everything. Uh, would love it. Uh, thumbs up. And if you would subscribe or even share this video with someone uh, you think might find it interesting. And we'll see you next week.